Hi, I'm Dave from Locomotion Models. Welcome to the Monday Club. It's Monday, it's 7 p.m. And the Bronx are on parade. It's time for the Monday Club. Feature... The Monday Club is proudly sponsored by TMC, the Model Centre. Check them out at themodelcentre.com. The website features extensive stocks of new models as well as selective pre-owned items where you can track down that bargain you've always wanted. Pre-order with confidence all of the forthcoming models from all the manufacturers. TMC also offer a renaming service. Exact identity of locomotive that you want. Check out their ring or go for Sleep Special with their bespoke service where you can choose from a more extensive weathered look right through to custom graffiti either off the peg or to a design of your choice. Check out TMC today at themodelcentre.com and start your model journey. A big Hello to you. It's great to see you and I hope I find you A well. Monday club is never late, total wagons, nor is it early. <laughs> it arrives precisely when it is allowed by Windows updates, even though we told Windows not to update. Gandalf, get down from there. Go on. Oh. Oh. Ow. Uh. Oh. Yeah. That's not the oh. floor. <laughs> You're upside down. Is that... Is that the half I'm thing not we... upside down, you're upside down. <laughs> this whole system's upside down. You've been on the halfling leaf again. You're yes. higher than a hippie on the third day of an open air festival. <laughs> so, it's great to see you and I hope you are well. Let's just move that across just a yeah. little bit. Can we just say to all the people who are saying, is it buffering, is it shuddering? Yes. Yes. Windows for the last hour has been updating. And Windows it does that, that, that thing where it goes, Yes, I've booted. It's like, are you sure, Windows? Like, shh, shh. Yeah, yeah, we're booted. Will you quick, man? We've booted. Yeah, look, look, Windows boots really quickly. Will you hurry it up? Thank like that. And it's like, that's what we've been up against. So, yeah, it's <laughs> not been the greatest of starts. Yeah. So, Jenny, <laughs> do we have a sponsor today? Our sponsor today is TMC, the model centre that currently has its amazing pre owned sale on. Go and grab yourself a bargain. Not right now, obviously, just to open it in another tab. But they have got a massive warehouse clearance deal on with all of their pre-owned, which are all tested and checked and accurately described, ready for dispatch. You can also specify an upgrade for uh, custom weathering, renaming, numbering, you name it, it's there. Plus a chance to grab maybe some of those items that you missed out on the first time around. Check them out today at the link down below. And the moment that Windows let, decides to let me, I will put the TMC link on the, uh, <laughs> overlay on the screen. We're having a lot of problems. Yeah, we had a great holiday, by the way. It was really relaxing. And Windows went, relaxed, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Not happy, let's put yeah. it that way. It's like, mm, here, hold my limoncello. So, uh, yeah, we're, that's what the um, the David Dickinson Orange is all about. Uh, we have been looking at this weird glowy yellow thing that they had in the sky. But um, I haven't got the chat up on my screen at the no, moment. I'm trying to do something. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm not having a go. I'm just saying I've not got the chat up on my screen at the moment, so I can't name check you all, but it's always good to see you. Don't forget to hit that like button. Share the stream to social media. Let other people know that we are up and running. And uh, then also, if you haven't already done so, do hit that subscribe button and uh, you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. Right. Anywho, um, what's in the news? Well, we went on holiday. That's big and newsworthy. No, it isn't. Nobody cares. But 
uh, Backman at the Statfold Barn event over the last weekend uh, launched their own 016.5 range. And that means that we now have three manufacturers, if you include Pico as well, your source of track, in the market in ready to run 016.5. And whilst Daypol uh, went for the Linton and Barnstable prototypes, uh, Backman have actually gone for some of the smallest locomotives which does mean that 016.5 suddenly becomes incredibly viable for minimum space O gauge layouts. And it does make me wonder how much 016.5 with a Backman Quarry Hunslet could you squeeze into a box file. I have a sneaky suspicion that uh, enterprising people, <coughs> John JMC, our guru of sound, will have that up and running in no time at all. And it might even you'd be able to do a full like roundy round in a, in a box file in O gauge. It's quite incredible, really. Um, also in the news, we have the uh, curious, not a curious cow, uh, you know, a curious cow dominating the world, hoovering up all the uh, all the awards and stuff. But no. We're talking Rapido trains, and that includes the Monday Club Wagon, yes, the 1907 Railway Clearing House Open Wagons are here, and uh, they very kindly actually sent a couple over to the channel for review, so we are going to be doing a review on these. What I actually need to do is physically get hold of a Monday Club Wagon. I know that a lot of you go, oh, hello. Open it up so you can, ah. so you can show. <laughs> Who turned on the lights? <laughs> So, um, there we go. Oh, you can't really see them in the box. Of course box. you can see them. Oh, apparently you can see them. So, um, there we go. Um, that's one of them. It's a bit... Let me take them out of the box. So, oh. these are all new tooled models coming through. Um, I'm going to grab, grab one of these out of the box. Because I know a lot of you have been enjoying your Monday Club wagons. I haven't seen one in the flesh yet. So, um, Which is weird, because you bought them. <laughs> yes, I've just paid for the entire batch. So that Monday Club wagon that you are currently holding um, in your, your sweaty hands going, Jenny, Jenny, look, it's come. I've paid for that. Um, I haven't actually been paid back what you've paid yet. Yeah, um, uh, it, it was quite an interesting experience, isn't it? Writing an, an enormous cheque. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote a check. I don't know who you're writing a check to. I paid by bank transfer. Okay. At some point, you will understand the uh, idea of metaphors. Yeah. Uh, also, I am taking the pee a little bit here. She's a burger. <laughs> yep. So there we go. This is one of the five plank wagons. Uh, the Monday Club wagon is a, I think it's a seven plank end door tipping wagon. So we've got Nigel Coles has received the Monday Club wagon. Pirate Scorcher 1998 says eight minutes late. <gasps> a oh. Monday clubber is never late, Dodo oh. Wagon. Yes. Nor are they get off. Nor are they early. <laughs> they arrive precisely when they mean to. Well, thanks, Gandalf. But what are you doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you still. Oh, you still. What that? Oh. 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 Have you been on the flagons of ale again? <laughs> oh, he's down. Thank you. Russell Benton says, nice, but I won't pay £32 or £27.50 discounted for a five-pack wagon. Unfortunately, that's the going rate. Yeah. Um, and if you knew what I'd paid for them, I haven't, have done an NDA, so I can't tell you the precise price. I'm not making much at all. I think Royal Mail yeah. makes more than me. That, that's the issue. Yeah. Uh, you, the problem is that the going price is the going price. That's it. And, and there's no way around it. And that actually leads us on into the other news that's just breaking. Is that... Kate... Why, you've broken the news again. What? No, no, you, you didn't see me. You can't prove anything, Copper. Yeah, where's uh, the link? Where's the link? Oh, yeah, it's on my phone. Where is it on the messenger, I think? Uh... No, it's on a website. Um, okay, send it. So, shall I send you the link? Yes, send me the linky pools. The linky pools. Because Jen has oh, some wait interesting no. information. No, 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 no. Um, yes, if you... Um... No, 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 yes. <laughs> right, let me have a look. Um, bingly bongly boop. Right, I'm going to send you... I'm just going to forward you that. So, right, forward... Bear with us. It's not like we just ran up here and went, oh no, it's done. Right, I have forwarded to you on Messenger 
Which we thought you saying, I'm not logged in on this computer. Yeah, but I am, so you can retrieve the message from I there. I know but how we, it works. Um, you're, we, a, you're a burger to me. We've so. had accounts from Cade at the parent company. Uh, out Don't in ask Hong how Kong. we got them. <laughs> no, it's, uh, they, um, they're registered, actually, in the Cayman Isles. Yeah, it's no, no, Bermuda, sorry. I thought it was Cayman, but it's Bermuda. Um, so um, they do have to release accounts. They have done. And there's no, no question of uh, them not having done so. They, this is all above board. So this is for the year ending 31st of December 2023. Much more sensible tax year. Just do the year rather than from April. What is the April thing about, anyway? Is that just to mess people's calendars up? No, that's when the New Year used to be. Like, when? <laughs> Very long time ago. What, nobody Hence, th the April Fool, April 1st. Oh, right. Yeah. Le Poisson d'Avril. Hey, <laughs> April fish, you. As the French would say, but in French. Yes. <laughs> Probably with a glass of Le Piador in hand. And oh, asking, oh, oh, oh. où est le ballon d'Alon? Uh, il y est dans la croix. Um, so, have you got this on screen? Not yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. So that's on the on the big one. Yeah. So actually, um, this is publicly available. It's being debated online. Um, it is quite interesting and um, could probably do with getting chat up as well. Um, a lot of people have been talking about this. They've posted a loss. So if you can scroll down. Um, I'm going to hand you oh, yes. the power. Yes, next slide, please. Where, where's... Oh, can I have the mouse mat as well, please? You just want the moon on a stick, don't you? No, nope, just your half of it. <laughs> oh. We're in the Ballon Dallon. Right, so Kader Holdings, Ch uh, Hong Kong Chinese Company. These are all in Hong Kong dollars. And uh, if you're wondering about the conversion rate... It's a... It's... It's like, um, I think it's showing their net worth as 2.179 billion Hong Kong dollars. Wow. As in equity in the company. Um, that actually equates to about 223 million pounds. Uh, Leslie Gilpin Railway says New Year changed the 1st of January with adoption of the Gregorian calendar instead of Julian calendar. Yep. But I'm um, just showing how, how finger on the pulse the tax authorities are. They have not quite yet got the... Uh, um, hey, just think about it. Mm. They're using a post Caesar calendar. Oh wow, that's a bit daring for them, isn't it? Um, oh, fifth of April says Christopher. New tax year. Uh, Jennifer Horton says in France they use the first of January for the financial year. How enlightened of them. Marcus Muggins says since Britain adopted the Gregorian calendar in the 1750s. Before then, the year officially began around 21st of March, plus the 11 extra days. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, Naive Gage, this is Cada, who are the parent company of Backman. Um, and they've reported a loss. So you can see down here, loss for the year 2023, uh, 73 million Hong Kong dollars, I think, is it? No, th Hong Kong dollars, thousand, 73 million 438,000 Hong Kong dollars. That's actually down from last year. Yeah. On a, I think I worked it out, it's something like 53 million pound uh, turnover. So um, when everybody's talking about um, Hornby struggling, actually, on the face of it, CADA are making a, um, a bigger loss per pound of revenue than Hornby were. Um, so... <laughs> Delving into this, I wouldn't be too worried about this. Now, before anybody gets really worried, oh, the figures are hidden behind the chat. That's a good point. So let me scroll it up. Okay, that's so, fine. That's, that's, I can sort that. Give me, give me control a second. Yeah. Um, apparently, it's very easy to sort. Chinese this out. economy is struggling. Um, so yeah, that. Whoa. Uh, the chat. It's the. Ah, uh, right. Yes, it's getting moved now. Ooh um so yeah uh let me just roll that down chinese economy is struggling apparently um which to be honest with you every economy is struggling there's a lot of issues post um post the yeah the plague that we went through yeah we've had covid mm. there's multiple wars going on there's problems still with shipping yeah right it's I... all really coming together all at once right uh rather than having just figures on the screen now i've shown you a quick look at that yeah i'm gonna go back to this so we can get the chat up on the big screen uh 
Oh, uh, yeah. So, no there we go. Right. Um, chat on the big screen. Yeah. Chat on the big screen. Oh, that's right. Give I'll... me that, that, Jen. Give me a second to try and sort. I'm doing like five things at once. I'm sorry, Jen. Okay. Right. Um. So what have we got? Uh, Partick Hill Station says hello, one and all. The chat is duplicated on the screen. Shouldn't be. What? Um. Chat is. What? No, sorry, no, no, don't. Worry. Um, no, um, I think it must be some kind of glitch at your end. I'm not sure. It do isn't showing like that for us. Um, but yeah, um, PIM1234 says present. Good to see you. Uh, Flint Hills Mother Railway Jeff Hammond says thank you, Zoe. Chip Rockwell says England moved news day with the Gregorian calendar, but Scotland had already begun observing it on the 1st of January. Yeah. <laughs> None of your English tax years here. Can't really do a Scottish accent tonight. No, Tard is near the signal box, says Richard Swiderski. Sorry, but no, the uh, chat is not duplicated. I'm looking at it. Um, must be a glitch at your end. Yeah. Um, Tard is by the signal box, says Andy Stewart. Uh, good evening all, says Dave Swindon Junction. Great to see you. Hope you are well. Now, um... Uh, don't forget to hit that like button, share the stream, and subscribe if you've not already done so. But, anyway, um, so it's interesting to actually finally see accounts. I know that um, for for a while, um, people have been saying, oh, they won't show you that they're, they're not obliged to show accounts because no, they're they are. a family-owned company. But actually, nope. um, I mean, technically, we're a family-owned company, our old mouse media. Well, yeah, but we're in the same family. I have to submit my accounts to Company's House every yes. year. And they are. I said my account, our accounts to <laughs> Company's House every year. And you can see just how little YouTube pays. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but what's interesting is that's for Kada Holdings. And I'm not seeing anybody else. Uh, oh, apparently Richard Swiderski says it can be duplicated if watching on a smart TV. Ah, uh, well... Unfortunately, I can't help with Nothing, that. that. Again, like yeah. I said, that's that's, uh, that's a glitch with YouTube. That's and your TV. a U. That's a U thing, not and a nothing. I really thing. wish I could help you out, but I don't know. G R Railway says, "Have you got Holy War in 009? I don't actually. I haven't got I picked, any. I. That's because of the thumbnail. I picked a really nice looking Backman uh, little uh, locomotive for the thumbnail. We don't have it, no. but we'd like it. I don't <laughs> have any of the Quarry Hunslets, the small Quarry Hunslets. I've got a main line Hunslet. I think I've got Charles. Um, but I don't have any of the small Quarry Hunslet, but they are precisely the models that Pacman is introducing in the new to them scale of 016.5. What is 016.5? Well, I'll tell you. Is that the it, one that we saw at uh, Daypol? Yes, Daypol Ooh. have already launched their range, so this is actually quite significant. Because we've got a second major manufacturer supporting the scale, upscaling their 009 uh, locomotive. Yeah, uh, Holy War, epic name for a train. Simon Trains, Mother Railway Showcase, absolutely. Retro Rambles, yes, we are live this week. Yes. <laughs> oh no, I've been put back in my glass box. Um, Harry Sedgwick says the Backman 32-825. It's LMS IMAC class 2 MT Mickey Mouse 260 Mogul number 46521 in BR Line Green with BR Lake Crest 1960s. <gasps> yes, it is. John JMC, our guru, sounds says, I have all five of the Quarry Hunslets and Charles as well. Haha, -ha. I bet you have. But now, 016.5 is basically O gauge, but narrow gauge. It 016.5 is to O gauge what 009 is to double O. So, um,. And also what HOE is to HO. It's that kind of a thing going on. So it is very significant. I know with TT120, we initially had Hellion announce that they were going to the scale. They then pulled out when it was clear that pretty much all the models that they were planning were also being done by Hornby. Um, and that was a shame. I think a second manufacturer in TT120 would have been a very good thing, but it was not to be. In 016.5, We've had Daypole tip their toe, dip their toe in the water with the Linton and Barnstable prototypes of the Manning Wardles, um, coaches, stuff like that. Uh, March West Junction has the uh, information on how to deal with the double uh, oh, yes. chat. So press select on your television, click on live chat, and then deselect it. Aha! And that should do it. So thank you so much there, March West, because I 
we would didn't not have had an idea how to do that. We didn't know how to do that. No, so thank you very much. Uh, Joe Smith asks, Jenny, did, did you buy any train-related items when you were away? We were going to, weren't we? We, we would have liked to. We, were, we planned to take the train to Rome yes. and uh, go to the Roman... Um, that, that is an amazing statement. Go to the Roman train shop. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so Salute. cool. Salute! No, Salve! Is Sa it Salve? Sa yes. <laughs> Salve! <laughs> Salve, Senor. But unfortunately, we... So, sorry. Salve, Senato. Okay. <laughs> Um, but um, presumably uh, Latin doesn't really have a word for train. No. There we go. But yes, Funny that. Yeah, anyway, meanwhile, back at the, the ranch... The best you could do is some kind of caravan. Uh, meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, what I was planning to do was... Um, I've actually looked up a model railway shop in Rome, and the idea was to try and get to it um, if we did a day trip. But what we realised is where we were staying, which was down near Sorrento... Is a blooming long way from Rome, so we'd have spent the entire day on the train. Not necessarily yep. a bad thing, but you've got to remember that um, uh, you know when you're on holiday, you don't really want to be commuting. So we're going to do it again. Mm. G R Railway. Did you go to Statfold over the weekend? Yes. No, asks. no because, we didn't. Uh, I'm not too recovering. Well. Recovering. I'm coming yeah. back from Italy. I had to sit in a tube. Uh -huh. with, with recycled air, with lots of people I didn't know, so now yeah, I've got yeah. germs. Mark Wilson, the waxer of the DeLorean, says, I took my first trip to Statford Barn on Saturday. Amazing it's only place, 30 it? minutes away. Oh. It was okay, to be honest. I, but, um, I love it. I, I think it's an amazing place. I love the tram. I, I think like we trams. Yeah, I think we have to unpackage some of this. Because um, 30 minutes away and you've never been before. I'm actually quite surprised. What are you looking for? Well, he also asked what the delivery was of the, uh, of the class of weird that he got me. Uh, oh, it was Starlet, the um, yeah, Red Star it. Parcels. I'm trying to get it. Um, <laughs> You've got all these choo-choos next to it and I can't yeah, get yeah, to it. Yeah, um, you really pick your moments. Sorry. Um, Valley's 56XX suggests... Exemplar Ferriwiaria ferri is model railway in Latin. Um, ferro, I, I'm going to pronounce it with a V. I think in Latin it would be a W sound for the V, but I'm going to. Ferroviario. That's a bit of a mouthful. Where are we looking? Um, Robert Davies there is the, uh, somebody at a fifth. Ferroviario. Okay. Um, yes, I can see that work. Yes, uh, Iron Road Runner. Um, Pedantic Mongrels Railway Channel says, "How are your new Rapido wagons running any tonight?" Not the Monday Club wagon. I haven't actually received one, despite the fact that I just paid for the entire run with a bank transfer, because right. um, I have to pay for them up front. Yep. And that uh, I basically pay on delivery of the batch. And then you guys slowly buy them in in little chunks, and eventually I get I get the price of a small family car back in my bank account. Um, oh, Richard Brutus, thank you so much. I uh, very kindly donated two pounds on the super chat. And says please thank say you. thanks to Tony's Trains for a great show. Yeah, Tony's Trains always puts on an amazing show. We oh, have. Oh, this the Statford Bar. Yeah, the Statford yes. Bar. We've I've been to it. yeah, uh, we've been to Statfold Barn quite a few times. It's the Narrow Gaze show, always a great show, and and uh, the new Wally show um, is being held at Statfold Barn, I believe. So this is the show that was formerly at the NEC. Uh, Wally have teamed up with Statfold Barn, so the Wally show is now going to be at Statfold Barn, not to be confused with the um the uh, magazine run show that will be at the nec mm -hmm. uh, which will not be warley even though it's going to be held at the same weekend that warley formerly was held at at the nec so a little bit complex from the outside but it's quite simple once you drill down into it uh, oh james spinks railway says the monday club wagon has sold out Oh, you wouldn't mind just checking i will check that just, we're going to double check that but that is great news and they don't they tell me nothing. I learned this from a book, or at least from the chat on the screen. So thank you guys for supporting the Monday Club Wagon Project. If it has indeed sold out, <laughs> I am so relieved. Um, 
Um, so thank you everybody who has purchased a Monday Club Wagon. Um, this will actually be the second one that sells out on arrival. I think the very first one, which was an Acura Scale MDV. Yeah. Rails of Sheffield say sold Boom! out. Sold out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm so relieved. <laughs> Because the last one, the um, KR Models PAL brick, um, stuck around it for a bit. It stuck around a little while and worried us, but of course... Yeah, Rally 56 XX, boom, it is indeed sold out. Brilliant. Um, so thank you everybody who supported the Monday Club Wagon Project. What I would say is if you sat there going, oh no, I haven't bought mine yet. Well, you've had months of us saying if you don't, if you don't order it, then you can miss out. Yeah. But... Um, uh, call in at the shop. The Rails of Sheffield shop has different stock, so they may have one or two in stock, which is why when you... May. Yeah, I'm not saying they will, but they may have one or two actually in the cabinet. So uh, what I would say is if the mo missing out on the Monday Club is a nightmare that you don't want to be involved in, and you still haven't got one, then you really need to call up Rails of Sheffield first thing tomorrow morning and uh, ask if they've got any in the cabinet. Because you, you can still buy it mail order and they'll post it out. Uh, but the shop has like ring fenced stock, which represents what's in the cabinet. It's only like one or two. It's not a lot, but that could be an avenue if you um, uh, if you really wanted one. And you ignored all the warnings that it would sell out and we're never going to do it again. But yes, um, uh, that is a possible route if indeed um, you suddenly realise that you've missed out. Do you want a bit of um, fresh no, air, Rob? that. I'm just, I'm not well. I'm going to go and get some Cokes. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. And I'm going to take some cold and flu tablets. Okay, well we've got our biggest fan here. And, <laughs> yeah. Yay! Um, so um, I'm going to I'm going to put this here. I'm going to give Fan an option. Anybody who's wondering where Topsy Toaster is, um, he's gone off to visit his parents in Toaster. And if you're thinking, oh, that's a made-up name, I thought it was as well. But actually, yeah, to Toaster does exist. It's near Bracknell on the A40 or just off the A43 A5, and it's spelt Towcester if you're wondering, but it's pronounced Toaster. Um, Alan Downing says scalpers bought them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they did, they did. <laughs> yeah. Anyone want a Monday Club special price? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just double RRP. Uh, oh, you want one? I got special price. <laughs> yeah, it'll, they'll be on eBay with the listing with with uh, look spelt with two at symbols. I hate the, that. Oh! It's so bad. They might and as well. Everyone have, did it for a while. Yeah, they might as well have just put in their listing. Hello, everyone. I'm a cook. Um, uh, Richard Swiderski says, is that near Sandwich? Yes. No, but it's got an aunt and uncle in Sandwich. Uh, Sandwich is in Kent. Um, Toaster is in Northamptonshire, I think. It's still near compared to where we've just been. No, it isn't. It is. It's down the street compared to the distance we have to go to get to Italy. Uh, yeah, you, you try walking it. I don't uh, want to walk to Italy, I'll get wet. Uh, DJK666 absolutely says, if you missed this year's Monday Club Wagon, there's always next year's. Ah, and Joe, do one yeah, next year. Joe Smith says, any plans for the next Monday Club Wagon? Yes, uh, we've got loose ideas. and um, I really want to do Engage, but the, the problem we, with Engage is we'll need to do a Kickstarter. Yes, um, for Engage, we're going to try and get set up a Kickstarter. Um, because um, essentially I have to buy the entire production run and if people don't buy them I end up with loads under my bed and oh I've got no. and I've got new <laughs> You've got no space because yeah. that's where your books are. <laughs> yeah. Publisher went, Right, we don't want these and it's like what? Oh okay. I said I was sorry. <laughs> Flint Hills model railway Jeff Hammond says it's right next to Silverstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, that fun to go on. GR Railways. So, do you think Narragage is taking over? Thank you for steering me back onto tonight's Jen, topic. Yeah, what's the news? The news. I'm I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, 0.16.5. Anyway, meanwhile, back at the ranch. 
I think the thing that um, that narrow gauge has got is that you can get a lot into a small area. And in many respects, it's um, a nice quirky way of making a model railway where for a lot of people, there's a lot more free reign. Yes, you can model strict prototypes, but because a lot of narrow gauge lines were industrial, uh, were kind of rough and ready, there was a, a real kind of Heath Robinson air on a lot of lines. There's a lot more scope to do some really interesting models. There's also a lot of these narrow gauge lines out of necessity ran through some pretty dramatic scenery where regular railways could not easily and affordably penetrate. So a lot of Wales had some really quite iconic narrow gauge lines. I'm thinking the Talith Thin, I'm thinking the Festiniog, I'm thinking of the Welsh Highland Railway, the Llanberis Lake, the uh, Port Dynoric uh, Quarry Railway. There's a lot of these different narrow gauge railways. Uh, Brack Lee, says Jennifer Hort. Yeah, I knew there was a Brack in it. Um, and I, in my head, we were we were turning off the onto the A43 at Junction 15A of the M1. Um, um, but yeah, uh, I, I think there's a huge untapped potential with narrow gauge. And the other thing is, space is critical for a lot of people. Um, and yeah, I know I'm very lucky. I've got a huge space here. Oh my word! Thank you so much. 156 Andrew Shortbread Express has very kindly donated two pounds uh, on the super chat. Thank you so much. And it says, uh, Jenny and Zoe, did you miss shortbread supply? Yeah, they have funny food in Italy. Now, um, just to go back briefly to the Italian holiday. And thank you so much for your generosity, by the way. Uh, 156 Andrew Shortbread Express. Um, Food in Italy is not like when you go to an Italian restaurant. Um, it's a bit like if you're used to Chinese from the Chinese takeaway or curry from the curry house in the UK. It ain't the same when you go to China or to India. Well, very much the same. Indian cuisine, uh, um, Italian cuisine is quite different when you're actually in Italy. Um, but, you know, very nice, but very different. But um, I must admit, I was craving for a pizza all through our trip. Really quite hard to find pizzas in Italy, funnily enough. Anyway, um, a Jaherik or Jaherik, um, not sure how to pronounce properly. Uh, sorry about that. It says, if it brings new people into the hobby, it can't be wrong. And Zantex says, narrow gauge also allows for tighter curves, as such mountainous countries often have them. 1067 millimeter being the main narrow gauge track gauge along with meter gauge yeah 1076 is i think it's that cape gauge uh which is sort of like about three foot um three foot six or three foot seven or three foot eight um so um i know certainly out in indonesia java um cape gauge uh 1067 millimeters is like their standard gauge and then they have a lot of narrow gauge as well. But no, narrow gauge, uh, when you start looking at videos of not just UK-based uh, narrow gauge, and yes, DJK666, if you want to be a smart ass, double O gauge is narrow gauge. But but yeah, um, Wamgok says plenty in Sorrento. I didn't see any, although Sorrento is quite tourist-led. So I can guess that they cater a bit more for the UK palette. But we were in a place called Siano, uh, and um, it was much more your traditional Italian fare there. Oh, it was very nice. Oh, yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, Zantex says, uh, it works out, a double O is four foot one inch. Yeah, very, it is actually quite narrow gauge. Uh, Leslie Gilpin Railway says, pizzas are widely available in Naples, had fantastic pizza. In per Peru Perugia, Perugia, Perugia. Yeah, um, we had a fantastic set of pizzas when we were in uh, Siano. Mm -hmm. Um. Do, oh yes, we the pizza night with. Oh yeah, yeah but that was oven. that was made at the villa by the villa's owner yeah, in his right, own pizza oven. But I mean, when you went into a restaurant, anyway. Right. Um, I have to admit, the only time I ate out, I had a burger and chips. 
<laughs> hey, British. Can I just? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's back this train up here. The the burgers in a bun in Italy. I tell you what, they could they teach us a thing or two. They were really nice. Um, I had one actually when we went to Divicio Equense. Oh. oh, that was the night that I got. Uh, I decided to stay back because you were supposed to be going to a fish restaurant, weren't you? No, 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 no. <sighs> Excuse me. No, um, Vico, uh, Vico Equense. That was on the first day when me, your dad, and Dave walked in, and we went to a. You um, were looking around, getting the, the getting the land. lie of the land. Richard Grutti says, I burnt my pizza tonight. Oh my god! Oh my god! Get me the president! That is. I'm so, so, so sorry for your loss. Um, Charlie Chimp says, Hi Jen, do you have any pictures or videos of your holiday? Coming on Friday. Friday's <laughs> video, which will be going out to uh, members and Patreon backers, mm. uh, is a. Uh... Oh um, it, it's, it'll be going out uh, soon. Um, Bally's fifty six xx says, "Did you go to Sorrento or Capri?" Yes, we went to Sorrento. It's we lovely. We didn't go to Capri again. It, it's, it was so much to do and not enough time to do it. Next, we're planning to go back. We're going to do Naples. I want to see the the sites in Naples. I want to see Herculaneum and I want to see Capri. Absolutely. Bo Minnick says, your British Italian food is mostly seen through the eyes of 150 years of American Italian food sent back across the Atlantic. Yeah, and that's pretty much where our pizzas come from yeah. as well. Our pizzas have a lot of New York influence. And I I'm sorry, Chicago, you think you can do pizzas, but what you've got is a quiche with tomato sauce. You're in. nicking the joke that I said on Question of Track yesterday. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um... Ruined a perfectly good quiche, that's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, no, narrow gauge, you can get a lot more in the space. Um, as a, yeah, and I think as well, there's a lot more rule one that just works with, with narrow gauge. And you can go down to some really quite small industrial concern. If you want to do a box file layout in 009 or even 016.5, there is a lot of scope to do that. And I think that's where, I, you know, narrow gauge is never going to replace standard gauge in model form. But I think we're going to see a larger and larger segment of the market. And the first step is always ready to... <laughs> Leslie Gilpin Railways, oh, them fighting words. Nope, Chicago pizza is definitely amazing. I'm not saying it's uh, not amazing, but it's a quiche with tomato sauce on it. Yeah. Um, 57305 Northern Princess says, Hi all, just got in from the pie factory in Tipton. <laughs> oh. A Monday cover is never late to the wagons, nor are they early. They arrive precisely when they mean to. Why are you pointing at the ceiling? That's not me. Oh, no, I just left a load of my smelly old rags up there to confuse you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I should have... Why, uh, Gandalf, I should have recognised you by your odious stench that is up there. I'll, I'll have you know I wash regularly. Uh, how many years ago? Once uh, every six months is regularly. Uh, Dion Wollaston says, I paid nine euros for a Coke in Capri. I can well believe it. I bet you did. We got skinned at Pompeii, to be honest. Oh, my goodness. Pompeii. Um, we should have sussed. There was no prices on it. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing. I was hot and needed a drink. So I it, it was a good slushy. But... Yeah, and this is the thing. I remember many, many years ago on the show, I said, at some point in your life, you will get scammed. Yes. Well, that was my point in my life. I, was hot, I wasn't thinking fully through. They didn't have any prices. They charged me 10 euros for two drinks. Yes, not particularly big drinks, I no, may add. Weren't. And they weren't even alcoholic. Uh, Russell Benton says, is it the... Um, oh, how would Italians pronounce that? The... the Circumfusubium. No, but it'd be a ch sound. But uh, it, would it be churchum, or would it be surchum? Surchum uh, Vesuvian. That goes Naples, Pompeii, Sorrento. There um, is... We, we've been on that. Yeah, that yeah, Friday's video will include footage of that. Yeah. And it's narrow gauge. It's about three foot six or three foot eight. Technically, 
Um, I think it's um, Kate Gage. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Oh, oh, Sarah. Da- we've got got the the official Monday Club joke of the evening. Sarah Davis says, "You got burned in Pompeii." <laughs> Comedy is tragedy plus time. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so Stadtfeld Barn uh, uh, exhibition over the weekend. I'm the narrowgate show. We, I'm sad we missed it. Absolutely, we have been in the past. Stadtfeld Barn <laughs> is an amazing location, even without a model rail show. But it's great to go there when the model rail show is on. There's a lot of goodness going on, a lot of great layouts, a lot of great traders actually. And the thing to remember is. Whilst there'd be a lot of um, narrow gauge stuff um, for sale, and I know Backman re- did the big reveal on their 016.5. Let's change the angle of the dangle. I've forgotten. Kirk and Wesuya would be the pronunciation. There you go. Okay. Um, but um, uh, what was I talking about? Stuff or fun. <laughs> yeah, but what? Uh, sorry, I lose my train of thought very, very quickly. Very, very easily, it seems. Oh. There is a song called "Return to Sorrento." Must go again, says Return Jennifer. Return to Sorrento. I, I mean, it's it's. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Leslie Gilpin Railway says a former colleague rode that line to Sorrento with his wife. They started out with tickets and wallets, but they failed to arrive with them. You've got to be so careful. The trains are very, very crowded. The trains are crowded, and Naples is. Their version of Liverpool. Um, it's, no, it's Naples. Is uh, we were warned that Naples is kind of a pickpocket capital. Yeah. You've got to be so. Naples so is as bad careful. as Paris. Yes. You yeah. keep, if you want to keep your stuff, you make sure you've got your eye on your stuff. Mm mm. Uh, but no, Stanford Barn. Uh, even when there's not a, an exhibition on, it's a great oh, venue. Yeah. You've got the narrow gauge trains running, um, and we went there on like the narrow gauge day where it was just the narrow gauge train for the first time we went. Yeah. And that was incredible. And the one thing which is actually quite easy to miss at Statfold Barn, if it's running, the garden railway. It's yes. like the garden. It's the same gauge as the rest of the thing. It's two foot gauge, but it goes around the um, site's owner's garden, and it's amazing. And it's it, actually. Where the Stadtfold Barn Railway started, that was the original line. And it is incredible. And one of the things that it does show is just how tight a curve you can get a two-foot gauge train safely Mm. round. Because I was quite surprised just how tight the uh, radius was on the the garden line at Stadtfold Barn. I thought that was the best. Yeah, and we didn't find it until right at the end, almost by accident. I remember years ago. Zoe, can we go on this? Jen, of course we can go on it. it the was... way you were asking, it's like you thought mm. I was going to say no and you were going to miss out. Aha, uh-huh. I see people have seen the Atkinson borderer. Um, oh, I think the original comment's gone off the top. But, um, whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, James Pets says, uh, is there a rail replacement bus service for Jenny's train of thought? No, um, unfortunately not. The, the bus was... Uh, it had an incident. It got hit with a flying brick from Billy's replacement speakers. Yeah. Incidentally, for latecomers to the show, the Billy's replacement... Uh, the the William Club. Loudon Sons Rapido Wagon is now officially um, sold out. So thank you to everybody who supported the Monday Club Wagon Project again. Sold out really quick again this year. That is a really encouraging sign. There will be another Monday Club Wagon coming at some point. Um, but uh, it will be a completely different design. We never uh, repeat designs if we can help it. So far, we've gone for actually three very different wagons. Um, I uh, think my Jennifer bus... Jennifer Horton me, uh, says, I'm about 40 years out of date regarding Liverpool. It's not like bread anymore. You have to remember, I am <laughs> retro. <laughs> yeah, it would be like going to, if you've ever been to um, Govan in Glasgow, it's like, um, there's that kind of stuff going on. Um, Is that Rapsi Nesbitt's Govan? Rapsi Nesbitt, else not bad, Rab. Um, yeah, uh, Alan Reynolds at Buckland Junction says, oh, an Atkinson Borderer 190, I have driven one. Um, I My driving career started um, kind of 
after Atkinson borderers had disappeared from the road. Now, I remember in my childhood, sort of in the early early to mid 80s, Atkinson borderers still being about. Oh, Warbler Production says, Jenny, the garden line is no longer opened on enthusiast days. Not since someone broke broke in and, and scared Graham and his wife by entering the garden. So was that somebody on an open day just climbed in, or was that like at night somebody a crim trying to? It's I... always someone has to spoil it for everyone. Isn't always it? somebody ruins it for everybody. Else. That is an absolute shame because that was um, really an incredible part of the Statfall Barn experience. But I can um, I can understand. Yeah. You know, somebody's violated their personal space. You yeah, like? Well, I, I, was... I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have that. Yeah. Um, uh, Sarah Davis says Liverpool is still like that apparently. I was told by a car salesman in Liverpool when I was collecting from them. Um, I think it all it all depends on which bit you go to. There'll be bits of Naples that are absolutely just fine. But yeah. Um, there's a in, bit of Manchester that you just don't go to. There's a bit of Durham that you just don't I go just to. Can I just say, having worked on film shoots in Toxteth uh, in Liverpool, uh, if you want rough, <laughs> <laughs> Toxteth is your destination of choice. Um and uh, Mark Wilson, our waxer of DeLorean, says, Jenny, could you do a pool, poll on here to see who models which scale? Um, can we set up a poll? Yeah, I'll do that now for you, no problem. It needs to have double O, H O, O gauge, N gauge. And let's There's have only a... so many I can put on. Uh, and then if you can say 009 and 016.5. What do you model? O gauge. Engage. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You keep talking, sorry. So, uh, Govan was a shipbuilding community, now refugee in illegals areas as part of Hill Station. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Alan Downing. Very kindly donated £5 on the Super Chat. It says, what makes you decide what manufacturer to use for the Monday Club Wagon? There are some tissues behind you in a packet if you need that, and have a, a drink if you need to calm stuff down. Um, Apparently I've caught some... Oh, no. Oh, have you sprung a leak? Yeah. Nose? Yeah. Oh. Uh, the cupboard monkey's brain is making an escape through her nostrils, so just... Um, <laughs> That's the... <laughs> is that maximum? Oh, uh, just... Okay, roll that back <laughs> and just put narrow gauge. So narrow gauge will be all-encompassing of uh, 009, 016.5, HOE and HOM. So, uh, unfortunately, due to lack of scales, so we can't even have HO. So we can't no. have a fourth option. No. Okay. Perfect. So, anybody who models HO, I'm really sorry. <coughs> um, it's not in there. Uh, but, yeah, no, question about how do we choose... HO, just put... If you're on HO, just put double O gauge. Yeah, um... Lifestyle Unleashed Model Railway says, great to see two panniers running. I think that was um, um, the um, London Transport Duck. <laughs> Can't remember the full handle. I haven't seen him in yet today, but uh, we did that for him. He did ask. Uh, John JMC of Guru Sound says, um, uh, what, um, any videos tonight? Yes, well, there should be able to. Oh my goodness, it's 10 to 8. Wait a minute. B. Mozza says, what gauge do I model? Yes. <laughs> and that's a bit like me. I've got H-O, double O, N, O, 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 N. I think the only one... Oh, I've got H-O-E as well. Um, you don't model N gauge. You just play around with my N gauge. I ride your shirt tails. Big hello to 247 <laughs> trains. There's some degree of late colour. Let me prod Gandalf away. Uh, Warbler saying, what if you model multiple scales? Pick your top one. Pick the Pick one that you model the Pick your favourite. Um, so, hold on, Gandalf. Oh, it's fast asleep over there. Oi! <laughs> a Monday clover is never late to the wagons, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he needs to. Thanks, Gandalf. Uh, Naive Gage says, shame you didn't ask who was on TT120. It only gave us four options. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Sarah Davis is Santa and the Godfather from WWE. Both mo- oh, both modelling ho ho gate H O H O. 
Oh my goodness. <sighs> What? No, wait. Oh, oh, oh Peter Jackson, Cheadle Heath. So sorry, I completely forgot. Yeah, we did. Next week. Hold on. Do you hear that, that strange rumbling noise? It sounds almost like flappy clown shoes in some kind of... Oh, my goodness. Mike Ray, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mike Ray. £9.99 on the Super thank Chat. You. It says, here you go. Oh, thank you so much. That is incredibly generous of you. So um, that is, is is brilliant. Absolutely thank you brilliant. So much. Right. Uh, we'll give you another minute or so to, to answer the poll if you haven't already. Mm. David Scott says, just going over to the dark side of Engage for the box file. Yeah, I think a lot of people might be experimenting with it for the first time. The um, thing is, remember, with Engage, unless you want to, you don't have to have rolling stock. Yes, you it's can. It's all about the, the, the model itself. Uh, absolutely, that is a good point, actually. So if, if you don't you... want to invest in locomotives, but you do want to be in there, you could also do 009. Um, say, for example, if you're normally a double O gauge modeler, then you could do 009, but not necessarily need to populate it with locomotives or rolling stock, uh, because 009 track and N-Gage track that we've chosen, the code 80, are compatible with each other. Yes, one, one got, we on, it only allows us to put in four options. So, uh, unfortunately, um, there just isn't enough options. Um, as predictable, um, it's interesting, actually, a uh, double O gauge, 72%. That's not surprising. N gauge, 17%. And only 5% for all of the different narrow gauge, with 4% for O gauge. So yeah. you can kind of see there. So a quick straw poll. Oh, thank you, JL Railways. Oh, thank Very you so kindly much. donated £9.99 on the Super Chat. That is incredibly generous of you. It says, love the Monday Club Wagon, Jenny. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad that people are liking the um, uh, the the Monday Club wagon. Um, it's it's been a labour of love, and I will get on to explaining how we pick them. Um, usually, and uh, there'll be there'll be manufacturers here now going, oh, right, how do we get some business? <laughs> uh, but essentially, it comes out of random conversations I have with manufacturers. Uh, the first one. Uh, I just queried with um, Acuriscale. I think I was just chatting with Frank Burke at Acuriscale. And I asked about that. I assumed it would be completely unaffordable to me. And they said, oh, we'll put you together a quote. Um, and they sent it. And I went, I could do that. Um, so we did it. We just jumped in. And it was very much an unknown. And anybody, um, like, for example, I know that there are some other YouTubers now starting to look into doing this. Uh, the first one is always... The biggest unknown, because um, you know the first time you do anything, it's a bit scary. But it is a huge financial um, commitment. So you need to have um, the backing of um, a large group of people who will potentially be interested in buying it. As an individual, I would say that um, you know you could easily end up with like four hundred identical wagons. Yeah. on your layout so do bear that in mind um, but i went to a curious scale i had a good re um a good rapport with them anyway we've done a lot of work uh reviewing models uh supporting them you know promoting uh the hobby with them and uh, they gave me a good quote so that was how the first monday club wagon came about and we purposefully chose only having some very small embellishments because and it, this is what cracked me up was when the trolls going oh i'm gonna buy one and just like rub off the monday club mark ho, ho, ho. like it was somehow hurt me like oh no oh, somebody's no. removing a monday club so, oh no someone's paid me money yeah <laughs> oh no somebody <laughs> paid me money um so we don't care it Do was what actually you want when you get it the first monday club wagon was actually designed that with a fiberglass pencil you could remove the jk logo yeah because we didn't know whether yeah. people would go uh, for let's it let's have a different angle okay well while you're on with that uh Russell Benton says, did you see there's an article about box files in May's Railway Modeler? Oh, well, they're, they're behind. I, I'm going to say they're behind the curve, but actually, 
Um, they'll have been working on that for ages, and they're probably so. Oh, so have they mentioned the Monday Club idea? I don't know. We'll probably have, not us by we'll name. Look. But um, could you adjust that camera? I can. Would you? <laughs> um, I'm modelling double O gauge, says Paul Grant. I, m most people do in the UK. And what was interesting, we had a quick look at Kada, who are the, um, <laughs> the um, parent company of Backman. Um, they actually cite Britain and Europe as being their largest market share, which yeah. is quite a surprise. I think a lot of people thought that um now that is very telling ho gauge i you know we've got we've got a global audience no so. tt120 10 percent. 10 percent. t scale no 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 one goes for t scale <laughs> yeah it 10 is very neat percent on tt120 already bear in mind our audience will be a little bit skewed so you've got to what i would say is whilst we do have a global audience um, we probably have um, most, probably 80%. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think Shres says, which would have made the TARDIS easier to spot. <laughs> Before I moved the camera, it was right in the middle of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the Doctor would like to uh, move himself. Um, oh, it is himself again now, isn't it? Yeah, uh, what I can I confirm... I see the new right. season. Uh, Neptune says, what I can confirm is that here in Romania, HOE doesn't stand a chance in front of HO. There is little to none for HOE scale when it's about for Romanian models. But, I mean, our narrow, does Romania have a lot of narrow gauge railways? I mean, if you're in a country that doesn't have a lot of narrow gauge prototypes... Then you're not going to have a large... That, yeah. Scale. You'd have to you'd have to cater for people that were interested in mm. overseas or a different yeah. country, and that's always going to limit your market. Although I did say I think it's um, mini trains and Roco actually do cater for the Javanese sugarcane uh, railway type market, and I'm actually quite keen to do a narrow gauge Javanese sugarcane railway. I think I think the amount of times that you've watched those videos, oh, I love you and would you would be right there i i need to name check him actually let, let's let me just name check i, I i've got no no uh, i never other than in comments i've never talked to the guy but i want to tell you which this channel is because it's an amazing channel a and monday clubber is never late larry rogers mm -hmm. nor are they early they arrive precisely when they mean to thanks gandalf thanks gandalf Right, um, I need to find, where are, because it's, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, I don't want to get his uh, channel name wrong, but, um, <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Where, where are you? Can't find him. Uh, You'll get that. I'm subscribed to too many people here. Why do you oh, there we are. Ahmad, um, Ahmad Arif 29. So, um... It's a really great channel. Oh, yes, that's it. So we can we can share a link to his channel, um, and if that. if you do go there, just say um, Jenny Kirk sent me. But it's a great channel. You can really get sucked in. There's some amazing narrow gauge railways. So we're going to share the link to the channel for you because um, it's one I've been watching for about two years, and. Um, there's some really great stuff uh, on this channel. Well worth wow, watching. Wow, he looks young. Um, yeah, he probably well, is. I, I was uh, expecting an older, an older gentleman. Can, can I just say, when you're an old fart like us, everybody looks young. <laughs> um, DJK666 says, I need to head off to bed in a minute. Got work at 4.15 tomorrow morning. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear. Um, but... Um, yeah, it is a school night tonight. So, uh, so we've just shared a link to um, another YouTube channel. I, w I want to um, to promote that this channel exists. It's a great channel. Ahmad Arif twenty nine. Uh, he's based in Java and he follows the um, narrow gauge Javanese sugarcane railways in the main. Well worth watching. Believe me, you'll get sucked in. It's an incredible uh, channel. You're not the only one who yeah. watches it. <laughs> Andrew Lee says, I love that channel. But yeah, um, <laughs> if you leave a comment, just say Jenny Kirk recommended your channel. It's a great channel. And yeah, Ham Shackleton says, save that link for later. If you want some inspiration for narrow gauge modelling, that's where to go. And what I would love to see, actually, is that um, 
Stratford Barn Railway has, I think, two locomotives that came from Javanese sugarcane railways. Um, in particular, one of the sugar, sugar factories that Ahmed Arif 29 has done videos at. And um, one, one of my things I want to do <coughs> at some point is to video those locomotives and send in the footage to use because I think that it might be something of, um, of use for him on his channel to show um, two of the fully restored locomotives. But yeah, definitely well worth checking out that channel. Wamgok says, OK, guys, time to go now. Bye. Uh, look, you take care. We know it's a school night. It is, yes. Now, I've started a new job. And I put this out there because it's going to mean I've got less time for actually doing videos. So you'll see a change in the editing style. Because it's coming back to me. Yeah, because uh, the cupboard monkey's going back to editing all my channel. <laughs> for about six months, I've been doing a lot of the editing. So you'll, you'll get to know our different editing styles. But a uh, full-time YouTuber, it was doable, but it was a struggle. Uh, and, you know... Financially, yes, I am sponsored by a lot of people. So commercially, I do a lot better than a lot of other YouTubers in that respect. But I was made an offer I couldn't refuse by a previous employer to go back and work for them. And one of the things I've actually done is um, to um, actually um, arrange that I always have Tuesdays off. So luckily, it's not a school night for me anymore. Everything okay? I have no idea what this person's talking about. Uh, well, well, I'll, I'll look at it later. Yeah, yeah, no worries. It, it, it seems like a very long thing. I'm going to give it a bit of thought later on. Uh, right, so, yeah, sorry guys, yeah. That, that's not from the Monday Club. That was just uh, someone from my political yeah. stuff. Tony Wright <laughs> says, Hi Jenny, there is another Java YouTuber. The Roman Channel. Yes, I have watched that as well. Um, I think I found that channel via Ahmed Arif 29 but definitely um, do go and take a look. Leslie Gilpin Railway says, Ham Shackleton, I actually enjoy editing. I must admit I do as well. Um, as part of the creative process, I don't mind. Um, oh, what's this? Parcel from who? <laughs> doesn't say. Why are you looking at my inbox? I'm not looking at your inbox. That got sent to me. Someone's sending you stuff and send, putting my email down as the, the contact. Oh, wow. Um, okay. That's a bit, an, a bit odd. Yeah, Mark Lewis. We were talking about them actually before. The 016.5 Quarry Hunslet. I think that this, along with Daypole's uh, Linton and Barnstable prototype, uh, 016.5 um, uh, locomotives, the Manning Wardles and Associated Rolling Stock. Um, so we've got that, plus we've also got and um, the quarry hunslet and there's a range of denoric quarry wagons i think there's three so we've got a flat slab slate wagon we've got a uh, the traditional what everybody would recognize as a slate wagon for, uh, carrying the finished dressed slates um and then we've also got a coal wagon it's easy to forget that on the um uh, the denoric railway there would have been coal coming from port denoric going the other way up to the quarry to be able to power not just the locomotives, but the machinery as well. Um, so they've also done one of the coal wagons as well. David Scott says, question, do I need to load a video to YouTube before sending the link to the club? Yes, it will need to be on a site that allows you to host the video. Yeah. It doesn't have to be YouTube. You could send a, a from a Facebook reel, a Facebook video. Uh, you could put it on, um, what's that other one called? There used to be one called Live Leak, which is where all the dodgy videos went. Oh, and they're on Kick now. Are uh, they? They, uh, got, they got kicked off. <laughs> the, there, kick. was a, there was a various version of YouTube that didn't have the same copyright restrictions. And I can't remember what it was. But you can put it any, anywhere that's, got, that's able to stream the video. The only thing that we ask is that you don't email the video to me. It won't it will, get through. It will break my email system. Yeah. Um... What were we saying? I'm just um, looking back through and seeing what I've missed. Um, Russell Benton says, quite fancy TT120, especially when the 37 comes out. That HST looks superb. Absolutely. And what's TT120 interesting... TT120 looks great. Yeah, and I wonder if you could have TT120 narrow gauge. Now, there's a thing. 
Would anybody release narrow gauge for TT120? And um, does it actually exist? Because obviously TT120 very firmly established in Europe. Um, but I, I suspect they might get just a little bit on the tiny side. Because yeah. like, unless you were modelling the equivalent of HOM, but in TT120 would put you onto probably N gauge track. Mm. So doable. Certainly doable. Mm. Yeah, that was it. Daily motion. Thank you, Ginty Steam. Railway Rob says, apologies if you've already been asked this, but will you be going to Hornby Hobby at the NEC? Um, we are hoping to. Just currently arranging tickets. Uh, be myself and Iron Horse Railways. So we are planning on going. Um, Look, if we can get the tickets, the company will cover the, the hotel because it'll be a business thing. I, I can't. For work you. reasons, I can't. Ah, fair enough. Um, I can't go on the Sunday because I have to of course, be in bed yeah. quite early. Um, well, let's try and arrange something. Valley56XX says it would have to run on N or Z gauge track. Um, yeah, unless you go up in railways, TT track is the basis of narrow gauge and 4mm scale. It's basically HOM. Or, uh, um, are Google oh, Drive well, links okay? For a video, yeah. The only thing we ask is please don't send the video by the email. It will break mm. my emails. Yeah, or I suppose 0012. I don't know, 0012 is not really a thing in the UK. And that would be double um, or well, 4mm scale, but running on 12mm track, representing approximately 3 foot 6 gauge. And the thing is, 3 foot 6 gauge is quite unusual in the UK. Although in Ireland, um, there were quite an extensive system of 3 foot 6 gauge railways. Um, and we also had the Island Man Railway is, is in that kind of ballpark. And I think there were a is couple that the of... one that um, we watched the, that video? Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. That was interesting. Mm. And also, um, I think there were some Ironstone Railways sort of for approximately 3 foot 6 gauge. Um, so what? 3B oh, Rail. 3B Rail, thank you so much. Oh, well, you really don't need to, but thank you. You're too kind. Oh, oh. You're going to make her blush now. <laughs> so, but, I've got uh, oh, some uh, videos laid up, but yeah, we're starting about 10 minutes. Yeah, three foot gauge. Um, yeah, three foot gauge, three foot six, yeah. TT track will be okay for four millimeter relays around. Yeah, um, they're cape gauge. Um, so, they, they would be, you would notion that, well, I suppose it'd be HOM. Uh, would be the scale Bom. that they would fall into. Every time I hear HOM, all I hear, all I think is, um. Yeah. Don gets mother railway says, um, uh, 009 is 685mm gauge, scales out at approximately 2 foot 3 inch. Not a bad compromise to represent 2 foot or 2 foot 6 narrow gauge. And actually, it's exactly the right gauge for the Talithin and the Chorus Railway. Well, there you uh, are. Um, there's always a bit of give or take. I mean, come on. For, um, oh, uh, double O is um, like four foot one inch, um, so um, a little bit narrow. Um, yeah, Isle of Man or Irish Railways, Jennifer Horton says. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before, um, I think Isle of Man Railways might be a thing. Um, Irish Railway models, maybe they will tackle Irish narrow gauge. Um, but I, I, I did talk to Fran Burke about this, and I, at the time, I think they opined that it was probably a little bit too niche to be commercially successful. Warbler Production says, OO12 would work to model the Burton and Ashby light railway. The tram at Statfold being the only survivor of the fleet might be something for a different type of layout. Um, yeah, Lizzie Gilpin Railway says, I did consider Furness meter gauge. Just three foot three inch iron ore lines, and yeah, there are a lot of different gauges. And so, and to be honest, in model form, we tend to approximate a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, P four modelers, they're going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. approximate. I don't think so. Um, uh, Valley's fifty six XX says I'd love to model an Irish monorail. Um, that would be quite tricky. It could be done. I'm sure I've seen a model. In a larger scale, I'm sure somebody did it. I can't remember whether it was a working model, but certainly it was impressive. 
Uh, right, are we? Um, so another another fifteen minutes or so, and we'll start showing some of your mm. videos. Um, but yeah, narrow gauge is definitely a fun growth area. Now um, we actually, when we did um, a lot, uh, uh, sorry, uh, an interview at Hatton's many years ago now, uh, probably about five six years ago, uh, back in the heyday of Hatton's, and uh, one of the things I actually took with me was an old copy of Railway Modeler from about 2000, uh, the year 2000. And in it, the Hatton's advert, very interesting. You kind of in pre-internet days there, they kind of very proudly went, yes, we are on the internet. And they'd give you an AOL ad um, email address that you would email your list of requirements to. And they'd, they'd email you it back sort of thing. Um, it was very much in the era of telephone ordering. Um, but the 009 section, it listed sort of Pico track and a couple of um, kits for locomotive bodies that you mounted on N-gauge Ginty type chassis. And then in big capital letters, it always used to say, this is all the 009 we have. And you could just imagine Norman Hatton shouting into the back room, I keep telling them there's no demand for it. Um, and then, of course, uh, Backman launched its 009 range and absolutely revolutionised the hobby in the same way that when Daypol launched their affordable O-gauge models, it transformed access to O-gauge. So Backman transformed access to 009. It's interesting to note that in the UK, we've got Pico do a lot of um, stuff for 009 and we've got Backman, but... Pico tends to have their fingers in every scale because they produce the definitive track for the UK modeler and also for a lot of global modelers. Um, so they do tend to produce stuff like wagons. They did the small Englands. We've got the large Englands forthcoming. Um, but the real powerhouse of 009 is Backman, and they brought the 7mm version, 016.5. It's an interesting choice, I must admit. Some might argue that it kind of maybe they're splitting themselves thin. But I think that what it recognises is that O-Gage is becoming more popular. And it stands to reason that if O-Gage is becoming more popular, O16.5 is definitely a good choice to complement that. Now, uh, yeah, Naive Gage says 009 is the special stuff kept under the counter at Hatton's. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no, I know what he kept under the counter at Smithdown Road, and it was original mint in box, brand new Hornby Double O Super Detail Tin Plate Coaches. Right, um, let's change the angle of the dangle. Where's my... brew that is true. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and the gas from your ass. Worthington Mother Railway says, the Pico 009 track is great and different to Pico M. Absolutely. Um, it's got the speed, the sleepers are in scale. Um, I think they do mainline, and then they do, um, used to be referred to as Crazy Track. But I, um, I, I, I mentioned Crazy Track at DCC Concepts in front of Richard Johnson, and he really didn't like that term, shall we say. So, um, yeah, they've got like the kind of mainline, and they've got the down at heel stuff. And it's a really great range. Um, but it must be remembered as well, Tillig do some really great ranges of track. Arguably a much more extensive range of point work and stuff, including dual gauge. John JMC, our guru of sound, says, um, uh, Mark Wilson, the polisher of the DeLorean. I had a good look around that, like the India coaches that Boston Lodge made too. Um, Glasgow Underground, four foot gauge, fly my channel. It's Did getting you hear very, that? I, I, yeah, I can, I can hear that. That is very windy outside. Okay, I've got to uh, read something to you that is amazing. Uh -huh. just, I've just been sent this, it's a, and it's a question. What is the laziest thing you've ever done? And this person said, I was once on a US military ship having breakfast in the wardroom when the operations officer walks in. This guy is the definition of not a morning person. He's still half <laughs> asleep. And he sits down opposite me, barely conscious, trying to wake up, chewing on a bagel. And then he stops slowly picks up his phone and phones the bridge. There's light right in his eyes. He can't, he's barely squinting as he's typing. And he oh, says, I've heard this one. And he says, sit into the phone. <laughs> hey, it's Ops. 
could you shift our bar pads? Yeah, one, six, five. Thanks. And puts his phone down. And then he just sits there, squinting. And then ever so slowly, I realise that this big blazing spot of sun has begun to slide off this zombie's face <laughs> and onto the wall behind him. He it's... had the ship change heading just so that the light would be moved out of his eyes. Instead of getting up and getting off the seat. That is amazing. That is a definition of real power right there. Uh, Peter Jackson Cheadle Heath says, Southern unit, two bill or two how? It's a two bill, which is a class 401 in the modern Topsy parlours. Um, that's there because Wednesday's video is going to be a demonstration of the as yet unreleased class 423 or 4 vet sound profile on the HM7000. That is exactly what is on that. So that is the 4 vet profile on a HM7000 decoder. If you're currently like scrolling through the HM7000 DCC app, you won't find it. It's only on the beta test group. But I do a, a install into that class 401 uh, to Bill, uh, and I show you exactly how to get it in there unobtrusively, and then I do a full run through of the sound. So stay tuned to that for an exclusive uh, first listen on Wednesday. Um, uh, Flyman Chairman 1 says, Yes, worth using that, Jennifer. It's not a hard system to model, really. Uh, and uh, Charlie Chimp says they've had sunshine, then then hail in Stoke. It's been like that, actually. Um, first day back at work. I say back at work. It's really weird. I've gone back to work at the job that I quit last year to become a full-time YouTuber. Um, except earning more money for less hours. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, but um, I, I went over to Doncaster today, and it's been doing that since the early hours of the morning and coming back one minute it's like blazing sunshine i thought oh it's going to be a nice day and then we had like like sleet and hail falling david scott says we have a two bill at locomotion children yes absolutely and i believe that this model is actually the uh, preserved example um hold on a moment let me just read the number on it so this is number 2090. I have a feeling that's the preserved example um, in rail blue and a lovely model. I've also got a class 402, the 2 HAL. And um, Hornby did some lovely models of the pair of them. They were a little bit of an odd choice, but I'm glad that they did them. And what I intended to show in the Wednesday video is that um, it's actually. Um, the class 423 4 vet sound profile is really useful to go in not just the class 423 but a whole slew of different third rail electric locomotives it's the first budget sound profile that we've had for an all electric emu so i'm sure it'll find its way into a lot of second generation emus as well but certainly hornby have done class 401 402 the 403 brighton bell is another one um, and then we've also had class 410, class 411, the class 416 and the 419 from Backman. So there's a lot of different units that this is perfect for going into. Okay. Um, right, are we ready for doing... We are, but okay. before we go on, could you uh, tell us, do we have a sponsor today? Yes, we do. Oh, the Monday Club is proudly sponsored by TMC, The Model Centre. Check them out at themodelcentre.com. The website features extensive stocks of new models as well as selective pre-owned items where you can track down that bargain you've always wanted. Pre-order with confidence all of the forthcoming models from all the manufacturers. TMC also offer a renumbering and renaming service so you can get the exact identity of locomotive that you want. Why also check out their value weathering or go for something incredibly special with their bespoke service where you can choose from a more extensive weathered look right through to custom graffiti either off the peg or to a design of your choice. Check out TMC today at themodelcenter.com and start your model journey. Right sorry about that. Um, I just had to have a chat with Zoe she's not feeling very well 
Um, so uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to launch into the videos, but if she doesn't feel so good, she might have to cut and run, at which point we will have to bail from the videos because I can't do it on my own. Zantex says, Mark Wilson, did you manage to get an OO scale DeLorean? That would be cool. Um, that would be cool. <laughs> on the one on the rail wheels um, from Back to the Future 3. Oh, uh, that would be great. Yeah, that you can then push along in front of a locomotive. So, the first video we've got tonight is uh, from Martin Patterson, who says, Dear Jenny and Zoe, please find attached a video and some photos. It wasn't attached, you sent me your link. Uh -huh. uh, this is the first video of my uh, Yorkdale LNER Preservation Railway. Uh -huh. Looking forward to any advice and comments. So here we go. Okay, so... Uh, Can you do me... Uh, let her rip. Ones? There we go. Ooh, that is quite an LNER collection there. You see them all lined up yeah. in the middle. This looks nice. Mm. I like the grass between the... Uh, the grass? <laughs> between the, the arches of the viaduct. It looks nice. Where? Sorry, where are we looking? Right at the back. Oh, right, okay. See, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, So, um, I love an A4. That's something I do like to see in things there. Mm. Just building it up as you go. Yeah, you yeah, not yeah. Not feel like you have to do it all at once. So, I, I do like... l &ER had some really beautiful locomotives. Yes. Um, so we've got, um, quite a collection ah, I recognise that factory. Yeah. And that brewery. <laughs> <laughs> the brew that is true. I do like the brewery in the fact that men can't yeah, yeah, yeah. SHGP Media says evening clubbers. Implying lateness. Hold on, let me just... Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> oh, 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 give it back, give it back. Oh, there oh, you go, oh, get off, oh, oh, get off, oh, get off. Oh, a Monday oh, clubber oh. is a very, very, very what? No, um, oh, I, you've woken me up now. A Monday clubber of never late Toto Wagon. Stop it! Stop oh, it, stop oh it. you blinked no, all over it. Early. Look Did at that. I've got eyeball juice to. on that. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Ugh. Thanks, Gandalf. Thanks, Gandalf. Um, so, BR Early Emblem A4. Lovely. Yeah, and that's actually a livery of A4. I've now got two. I've got Sir Nigel Gresley, and I think it's Sparrowhawk in, in that livery. Um... So Nigel Gresley's uh, quite an easy one to get. I've got mines from Backman, uh, but Sparrowhawk is a bit of a trickier one. I like the amount of track that's going on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a lot going on without being too busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is really nice. So um, I'm going to move on because we've got a few more. But Not just a few more. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, he's even got the right one side. That's nice. I like it. It's a pub. And a port a -put -a. But it's oh. an old style one. Oh, it's a boggy crapper. It's a dunny. So look, thank you very much. We're going to move on. We've got a few to get through, but thanks so much for sharing that with us. Mike Ray says, bet the 4VEP soundtrack profile will not do the third rail arcing as the train pulls away in a cold and frosty morning. There is a spot sound for arcing. Is there? Yeah, it is there, yes. That is quite cool. Um, the sound is there. It is on there. Don't you worry yourself. They have thought of all of this. Um, so it's due for release, actually, and I, it probably will come out this week. I'm kind of hoping that we beat it to release, because there's nothing worse than having an exclusive. Like, yeah, I've already heard it this morning. Um, but um, I thought it was about time I did it, and I've done a full install into a Class 401. Um, Neptune says, it may sound silly, is, th is there someone here that is an owner of the... Hudson F7. Well, the if, real one. If so, can you move it? It's parked on double yeah. yards. Oh, yeah. But sorry, you can't park it there, mate. Um, <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, I know that Ollie of Wardle Road fame uh, does come on here, and he is a locomotive owner. Um, little Rustin. Ready, like, hello, I'm a little Rustin. Um, I don't know where that came from. No, uh, Larry I... Rogers says, I like that A4. Oh, <laughs> What's not to like? A4s. Um, I, I'm looking now at a shelf that's got 25, I think, 24, 25 of them. Um, I'm sorry, but they still do not compare to the humble Gronk. Gronk it up. Gronk it up. Gronk it up. Hashtag not a cult for legal and tax purposes. Beep, beep. <laughs> 
Um, but uh, yes, yeah, somebody asked about how many Monday Club wagons. Well, there's none left now. I'm not allowed to actually tell you the precise number. That again is. We've done three so far. Uh, I've done three different different liveries, but the actual number made um, it's the same number that an actual production run of any other livery would yeah, be. We've had so it, we did a proper full production yeah. run. So when you see these in the shop, what it actually means is there's as many Monday Club wagons as there are of this. Yeah. Um, I may even be slightly more. I just it suddenly thir- occurred to me they might do a lower production run for these. But um, actually, no, I'm not allowed to tell you. But just believe me, it is multiple hundreds. Yep. So um, it's a lot. Mm. It's a lot. Um, so next up, we so, have. Sorry. Somebody was asking about ready to run third rail track, and I think the problem is that um, it's. Um, a little bit more difficult to do in terms of third rail electric. It could be done. Uh, what would you? Well, yeah, you don't have the third rail through. Well, um, it's fifty six xx. No, no. What? what? <laughs> Not a cool. The star bleaching. Oh! It says I need my star bleaching. No, I don't need this in my head. Nurse, you naughty boys. Reach for the eye bleach. So, meanwhile. From 57305 Northern Princess, we have a message. Uh huh. Hello, all from the High Council of Time Lords. Here is a March running session of my trains running <laughs> at Wally Modeler Railway Club Room. And there's some running that uh, will tickle Jenny Zigo. Monday Club Wagon! After the main titles. Which is I don't you know just... why I did it in that voice, but here yeah. we are. Um, but yeah, um. Pirate Scorcher 1998. I'm not allowed to tell you the number in the run. Believe me, it's a lot. I've just paid for the full run. It's a lot of wagons. Yes, it is. Um, but, um, you know, it's... Um, luckily, they've all sold out. So I should be getting a check to get the money Here we back. Go. Beep, beep. Two, run, run. two. This is a really nice club layout. Mm. That's a nice 57. I've got the, the, the full retractable coupling on the front from when they were Thunderbirds. Da, 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 da. International Rescue! Okay, this is actually a really nice layout. Are you okay? I'll be back. Yeah, you, you run if you need to. Uh, unfortunately, the cupboard monkey is having to uh, run. She's not feeling very good. I think she's picked up an illness. We think possibly from the airport or the aeroplane. You know, if you sit in a sealed metal tube for that length of time, um, it's circulated air. I love this layout. There was a feature, I think it was in Railway Modeler, on the building of that footbridge. Really good kit bash, but oh, and you've got you've got the yard sign as well. Nice. You know, this is a really nice layout. I have to say, uh, always a pleasure to watch trains running on this. I'm guessing it's the the, the club layout. Um, SHGP Media says have all the current ones sold. Yes, the William Loudon Sons uh, wagon is completely sold out. Um, basically, within what less than a week of them hitting the shop, they completely sold out. We said they were close to selling out, and if you didn't believe us, well, are you gonna? It, it's um, unfortunately, um, like I said, you, you, if you, if if you're worried about missing out, you have to order it. Unfortunately, March West Junction TMD says that's my class ninety. It's, it's a lovely layout, lovely stuff passing around. Oh, is that is that a fourteen XX? That is nice. I love that. Can I just say compliments to whoever did build that footbridge because it's a really good kit bash. I think it's from was it the Wills kits for the the Wills footbridge kits, but that has been really done well. Um, every time I see it, I think that is a nice custom footbridge. <gasps> March West Junction TMD says Jenny this layout is being scrapped soon oh no um how big is it I mean I haven't got space for it I'll tell you that now but that's a shame um but you know I've just had to scrap the War of the Worlds layout from GMRC um unfortunately um at some point layouts past their usefulness um so War of the Worlds is now no more and um here on Weir Yard some of the bits have started turning up. I went and stripped a lot of stuff off for the team who wanted certain bits and uh, had to say to the club, look, 
if there's anything that you guys want just help yourself and skip what's left and unfortunately that's what happens with old layouts it's not the first layout that I've witnessed being scrapped that I've uh, had a hand in building uh, my very first layout um, that I built for um, like as like a proper model layout rather than a toy layout that got scrapped um, I did an article for model rail featuring um, how to actually salvage as much as possible um, I said that's a, 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 those private owner wagons really always do look good um, hence we're running a big train of them here on the layout I'm, I'm gonna put um, when we finish tonight I'm gonna put the GWR HST on that train ready for next week. So rest assured. Look at those Monday Club wagons. <laughs> um, but then I've also I scrapped Bolton Trinity Road. That's the one that um, you guys might be familiar with. Um, you know, it happens, unfortunately. This is a great video, actually. I'm really enjoying this layout. Sad that it's going to be um, getting scrapped soon, but... You know, it's one of those things. Uh, how do people get on and off? Oh, is there a subway? Right, there appears to be a subway. I was wondering how people got on and off that platform. Pirate Scorcher 1998 says, My friend Daniel told me about the War of the Worlds layer. Even I'm a member of the Bolton Model Rail Society. Oh, excellent. So, um, it, a great little club. Um, going from strength to strength. Um, we were incredibly honoured that they gave space to the War of the Worlds layer, but... It's, it's old, it's getting tired, and it was time for a change. Um, and I'm just really glad that it got a lot of love. I'm really thankful to the Bolton Model Rail Society for giving it a, a home for a number of years to allow people to enjoy it. It was never built with longevity in mind. So, you know, the fact that it lasted how it did was pretty good. Oh, is that the Bubble Skelly? Um, Dad's Army van, so that looks like Jack Jones the Butcher. Again, um, uh, some really great commissions from them as well. Uh, this is a lovely layout, actually. Uh, Leslie Gilpin Railway says, it tends to be track, I think, that doesn't get reused, especially flexi track. We reused mountains now, over three layouts. Yeah, um, I have reused track. There is track here on Weir Yard that kept, it was salvaged from Trinity Road, which in turn was salvaged from my first layout so there's there there are some points up here that have done three layouts um you've just got to be very careful it all depends on how they were fixed down i tend to use a uh, pva mix for ballast which you can um re-liquify with boiling water in a syringe and that does allow you to carefully get the track up and that's how i've always done it but if you glue it down with something more permanent then yes it can get wrecked but I always try and save the points. Um, I, you know, they are expensive, so very, very carefully um, worth um, recovering them. Stephen McLeay, big hello to you. Uh, it says good morning. Good morning from New Zealand. Late. Oh, um, Gandalf has just gone to uh, keep the cupboard monkey's hair out of her face whilst she's uh, on the porcelain telephone. Unfortunately. Yeah, uh, Valley's 56XX, yeah, soaking the track to get the points out, always well worthwhile. Evening to you, Chobberton Junction, great to see you. Night Timothy Kynard says, nice layout. Yep, this is the Wally Model Rail Club's, uh, Club layout. I'm told it's going to be um, um, scrapped soon. So if anybody wants to go to them and make an offer they can't refuse for this layout, you're going to need a lot of space. But now would be a good time to approach them and do a deal. I'm sure that they'd be happy to sell it on to a good home. Um, but just do bear in mind, no tyre kickers. Um, but this is a lovely layout. Um, uh, Raymond Legg says, Track is relatively easy to get for cheap except points and crossovers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Leslie Gilpin Railways points out, how can you be late from New Zealand? You are well ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> It's like, hello, from the future. Are they in the future or the past? I'm not quite sure how they the time. I mean, they're in the future. I think you're in tomorrow. Yeah, so what's the weather like tomorrow morning? <laughs> um, so we're running long on this video. Normally we'd have cut to another one, but the, the, the monkey of madness, unfortunately, is not feeling very well and has had to make a run. 
So hopefully she'll come back at some point and we'll work through some more of the videos. But this is really nice. Um, lovely four and six wheel coaches there. They're, I'm assuming they're the Hatton's Genesis ones. They do look particularly fine. Somebody's going to like crawl down my throat now and go, Oh no, I kit built them myself and uh, scratch built them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Peter Jackson Cheadle here says, if it's a club layout, wouldn't they want to reuse the boards? Possibly, but um, cleaning up baseboards for uh, building a new layout can be a bit tricky. And I suspect, basically, if you buy it for what the parts are worth to them, then they might decide actually doing from scratch is a lot easier and more flexible. But hey, don't ask, don't get. Um, I would suggest if... You have a large enough space and the pockets and you don't want to be um, uh, hanging about. Uh, I, I guess once they've decided to get rid of it, they'll want it gone because they need the space. Just approach them. Don't ask, don't get. Uh, Avondale and Halshaw Moore Engage Railway asks, What email do we send our videos to? You need to send it to zoe.robinson at uh, gmail.com. And you need to put Monday Club in the title, send the video as a link. So hosting on somewhere like, for example, YouTube, don't send the video as an attachment. Otherwise, it will, um, it won't get through. Um, Valleys56XX says, yes, I'm using the boards on the one I'm stripping to start a new layout. It can be done. I actually reuse some of the baseboards from... Uh, Bolton Trinity Road. I used them as shelving. I scraped them back, repainted them to basically paint over the battle scars and the remaining ballast. And I used them as shelves. Um, I don't believe there's any of Trinity Road's baseboards, excuse me, actually in the layout itself. Although, um, no, I think they all went into shelves. Yeah, I think that's um, that was everything. Right. Uh, I've cancelled my show tonight. Are you, are you okay? No. Right. Oh, so I'm not well. So just to let you know, Game Hammer Classic Gaming won't be going on after the stream. Unfortunately, uh, the cupboard monkey is really not well. Do you want some more to drink? What about uh, would a fan help? A little a bit fan of, won't help. A little bit of air, Mike. I know what will help. Going to bed. Yeah. Does that help? So a little bit of a, a, a breeze help? It's fine. No, the fan will not help. Okay. I appreciate the effort, but it won't help. Yeah. Uh, um, Raymond Lake says, I've seen this layout before. Shame it's going away. I know, I know, but, you know, layouts have a, have a shelf life. Um, they do, unfortunately. Neptune says, I'm not sure how easy it is to sell a layout. Even here in my country, some try to sell layouts. But the prices are high and it's not worth even thinking about. Yeah, the prices it's, are high because there's a lot of expensive stuff in the layout. The problem is, if you sell a layout, you will never get back what you put into it in terms of um, stuff. Um, most people, I, th I think for a lot of people, the enjoyment is in building the layout. And if you buy something ready-made, you're buying somebody else's dream, which doesn't necessarily align with what, you want in a model layout um, yeah. so really a model layout is only worth what you can salvage off it so from the point of view of the person breaking it up I guess you'd look at it as saying well I can salvage X number of points and that saves me X number of pounds on my next layout so that's kind of you're getting into the realms of what it's worth to you and then there'll be buildings that could be salvaged trees things like that but Honestly, most of a layout would probably end up in the skip. It's just the way of things. Why is there a tiny, tiny dude? Oh, oh, it's an ice skater. I have no idea where he... Where did you find him? There's another one uh, here as well. All right, fair enough. Actually, he looked like he'd do quite well sat down in a coach. Um, where's the dude? Yeah, they're ice skaters. Oh, nice. They, they came off... Um, something... Oh, it was that the Christmas layout. The Hornby Christmas layout. That's I what they... like the Hornby Christmas layout. Again, I forgot about that. Yes, I've also broken up the Hornby Christmas layout. It's only small. 
But then there's other times where um, we just donate layouts. Um, I mean, War of the Worlds has kind of donated to Bolton Model Rail for Society. What, four years? Mm. But least. also, um, Hornby's got one of my layouts. Um, I donated to Hornby. <laughs> the birthday layout. The birthday cake layout. I wonder what happened to that. <laughs> Probably quietly pinned. <laughs> I know they took it uh, and did a photo shoot. I don't think they kept all of it, though. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't I would did now. say to them that if they were scrapping it, I wanted the Hornby 003 rail track back. And as I haven't been offered the track back, I'm guessing it's still... It's is. probably in their archives. Imagine that. There's a, a Jenny Kirk special in an archive. Well, I... In I, a I, box that says, don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I do. It's probably in the, somewhere where it's it's covered in products and just gets used as a thingy. That would be cool. Yeah, um, Flower Chem One says yes. I've tried to sell a layout for someone. Plenty interest as a donation, but no sense. Yeah, I'd be honest. The main reason that many layouts just get broken up is simply because, from the point of view of the person who has the layout and wants rid of it, it's of more value to salvage what you can yeah. because that is worth more. Than what anybody would give to you. Unfortunately, yes, because no one wants your yeah. dream. For the uh, most part, I mean, there are sales, but when you're thinking about it, no one wants your vision. Yeah. They want their vision. I think smaller layouts tend to sell better. So, like, small shunting layouts are ones which work better because they don't need, like, a room. And you know, also, you could fit that into something else, it could become part of a bigger thing. Mm. Yeah, um, Simon Train's Mother Railway Showcase says, want a slice of the cake back? No, it's all right. <laughs> well, we had a cake on the top and we ate it. <laughs> oh, that cake was delicious. Yeah, 57305 Northern Princess says, the baseboards on Yardley are warped, which is another reason why we're scrapping it. Unfortunately, it happens. That was exactly the same problem with the GMRC layouts. I think everybody who saved one or more of their layouts found exactly the same thing. The layout boards warped, and that was the biggest drawback on uh, War of the Worlds, was the baseboards were garbage. Well, you know, they, they were only designed to last for, mm. like, the week that you were making the show. Uh, Peter Jackson Cheadle here says, has the Mountain of Mash layout been scrapped yet? No, Minneth Tatus is still with us. Um, I haven't, I, I need the space, because I want to do the new Project 009, but... I've staved that off because I'm going to be doing with the Nwins 3D products. I've shown you these before. I'm going to be starting work hopefully this weekend. We've oh, <laughs> I've gone straight into a box and gone, that's not 3D printed stuff. It's like, no, it isn't. So this is from Nwins 3D. They are available for sale right now. But I absolutely love these. These are incredible and are going to go into Project 009 box file. Um, so just showing you that there. The detail on these is incredible. That's a narrow gauge water tower and it's, coaling stage. It's uh, just beyond mm, what I would have ever expected. Even down to you can see between the planks. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be using these and they offer a much more cost effective way of getting buildings onto your narrow gauge layout than say buying ready to plant ones which are really nice. I have used them on Munith Tatus. But I'm really looking forward to making full use of these. And there's a whole range of buildings. These are from Nwins 3D. And what I like is, you know, the, the detail on these is just incredible. And they've got full interiors as well. So you could you, know, you can imagine how the light in and you can see everything. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, Nwins 3D um, is in. So um, just rest assured we are going to be starting filming with these, hopefully. Uh, over this weekend, and I'm really, really looking for. There's even a fireplace in there. Yeah, it is incredible. So imagine putting in a little flicker, like uh, uh, just a couple of. Uh, and look, it's got a hole in it's the got bottom. Got a hole in, so you can do it. There's actually a hole underneath the fireplace. You can see just there. So that would actually so mean a little um, couple of LEDs and a flicker unit or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can have the actual fire effect, and it'll look amazing. Absolutely, really looking forward oh, to making full use so of So we've had a question uh, yes. from Naive Gage. says, what do you think about modellers who contract out the layout design or parts of the build? Um, I, to be honest with you, I don't think anything because 
whatever you want to do is your decision. Yeah, and there's it's some, your railway, there it's are, your rules. There are some great companies, I'm thinking of Tunnel Lane Model Railways, that can build your dream layout for you to your specifications. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a charity, it's a business, and yeah, that's it'll absolutely cost. fine. It'll cost money, but I think there's some people who you know, maybe don't feel that building a layout is what they want to do. And for yeah. those people, maybe having your dream layout built as an investment, and somebody like uh, Dan Everson at Tunnel Lane Model Railways will do an incredibly professional job from baseboard through wiring, it will be a super reliable layout. Um, it's absolutely fine. I've always said, if there's a bit of this hobby that you don't enjoy doing, and for some people that is building a layout, then actually it's okay yeah. to find a way around that. You know, there's nobody saying that you have well, to... Rule have the... one. Hmm? Your railway, your rules. Whether you built it or bought it or whatever. Your railway, your rules. Hmm. What you want goes. That's how this hobby works. And I'd say, rule two, if there's something that you really don't enjoy doing, it's okay to pay somebody else to do it for you. Yeah. Um, aha, London Transport 57XX Duck, no L99. Uh, it says, good and bad. Thanks for the London Transport 57XX running on the layout. You're welcome. I did remember. And if you're wondering, it is L90. Um... I can't remember whether... Also, a Monday club over is never late total wagons. Nor are they early. They arrive precisely when they mean to. Thanks, Gandalf. Thanks, Gandalf. <coughs> Rick, Rick Morley says, time to get my case. See you all next week. <laughs> Bye, Jen and Zoe. And um, Neptune says, rule three, get well, Zoe. Absolutely. I, we, well, don't worry. I will steer her into bed. We will juice box some... Um, um, Star Trek Voyager or something and I'll make sure that she's feeling better tomorrow it's just mm. it's just how it is uh, uh, we, we were in a, a recycled germ factory basically uh, Simon Train's Mother Railway showcases I did get a tunnel from Dave Dave Angel Trains for four pounds on the Engage box file Nice. But got a got an Elka N-gauge bridge for fourteen ninety nine as well. Ooh, cool. Um, <laughs> Rule four: layout equals outlay. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. James, or is it James Pet, the man who likes to say I approve. Uh, that is absolutely the case. Um, do you know how you make a small fortune in railway models? Start with a big fortune. Start with a big fortune. Yeah. We've just had um, Cader, the parent group of Backman's uh, accounts, and they're making a loss. Um, yeah, not saying they're, they're not in trouble at all. Um, I doubt they're in trouble. Really no, do. no, no, no. It's, uh, it's the way of the world. Right now, things are a little volatile. Mm. Richard Gruder says, is that a Class 37 starting? <gasps> I know what's wrong with you. You've eaten a Class 37. That's, that's why you're making these weird noises. Yeah. The London Transport 57XX duck number L99. Can I have a custom wagon for my railway company, the Midland Granite? This, that's the said, Midland Great Northern and South Coast. Oh. Um, yes, the, if you, you can commission one, but... Like, not just, no, let, let, let me do this. You know, we're not about commissioning. Oh. There are kits where you can build a wagon. Yes. And there are uh, places where you can get decals. Yes. So, yes. You can have a custom wagon. Uh -huh. It will take a little bit of time and effort, but you can do it. Uh -huh. and, it's, and it's well worth it. And that's what I love about this hobby. You want uh -huh. something, you can get it. Well, actually, it's like um, 247 Developments. We've got a video coming uh, on the 3D printed O-Gage Hydro Wagon. Yes. Uh, got all that completed, but I've actually put a fictitious livery on it. It's currently, um, it's not up it's, here. It's downstairs do waiting. Do you want me to go and get it? No, 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 it's all right. Um, it, it's waiting for photography, uh, but I did a custom livery on it, so it's got a custom sat link livery. Real hydro wagons never lasted anywhere near that long, but I figured if it reached the 1980s, it would be in the engineer's fleet as a specialist wagon. So I did it as a, um, uh, a, a sat link uh, liveried wagon. Yeah. And it also meant that I could get away with not using the Mansell wooden centred wheels because 
um, by right any wagon that had lasted for like 80, 90 years probably had new wheels. would have had new wheels fitted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Richard Griffith says, my co-op sells wagon wheels. And I bet they're smaller than when you were a kid. <laughs> they yes, I looked at them re recently. So I remember wagon wheels were a meal. Yeah, These but of course they're a snack. Yeah, but your memory of that is when you were small. Yes, but adults at the time as well thought they were big. They always sold themselves on being big. Yeah. Oh, I mean, goodness. people who collect packaging, vintage packaging and adverts and stuff would be able to tell you whether they've got smaller or not. Yeah, and now, that has actually been done one time. Uh, I believe it was the Big Breakfast. Mm -hmm. They went to a person who collected old uh, packets and said to them, look, they, this company says that they're not smaller, you just remember them being bigger because you were younger. Yeah. So can you confirm whether they're bigger or smaller? And he said, they are slightly smaller. Yeah, um, oh, oh, hold on one moment, I just need to... Bing! And the jammy ring, I, rem I vaguely remember jammy rings. Now can I just well. say, now I remember bags of crisps and chocolate bars weighing one ounce. And I can remember as a small child looking on the backs and seeing one OZ, one ounce. Now, when everything went over to metric, one ounce is 28 grams, but they became 25 grams. Yep. So they got slightly smaller. Yep. The price didn't, but they did. Um, and this is one of the things I think when uh, metrification comes in, people are always really annoyed. And I think one of the reasons people don't want metrification or decimalization at the time is because they know that gouging will happen, and unfortunately, it does. Yeah. Um, it was one of the things, actually, when we were in Italy, I was quite curious about. When Italy went over to the Euro from the Lira, I do wonder, did what did they have in place to stop people from profiteering? That, from... Is, that is, of course, a very good question, because I guarantee it will happen. It happened in decimalization. Of course it did. It happened in metrification. It would have happened again here if the euro had come in. We would have had the conversion change, and all of a sudden, well, we're not we're not using that particular exchange. We're using this one. For no, the not only that. I'll tell you what would have happened if Britain had have adopted the euro. Shops would have gone. Oh well, we'll just leave the prices the same. But of course, one euro um, is only worth like. Um, oh no! Hold on. No, which. I'm getting confused now. Like one to one, actually no, they They'd wouldn't. Have done one to one, yeah. They couldn't have done one to one because then the retailer would have lost out. Uh, it depends on the time, uh, and, but something there similar, would have, there would something have been. similar does happen. American stuff coming over here, it's usually a dollar turns into a pound. Yes, but a dollar's not worth a pound. No, a dollar's worth about what eighty eighty five p. Yeah, mm. it always happens. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I think, and that was, if we'd have ever adopted the euro, I think <laughs> they would have had to have been strong legislation in place yeah. to protect the consumer from price gouging. And it would have still happened anyway. Yeah. Uh, because yes, that's Ava, what people are like. Yeah, Ava, an inch and take a, a yard. Yes, uh, Avondale and Holshaw Moor engage railways as they did it with fuel, gallons to litres. Yes. Yeah, uh, and that was the thing. That was the, that was the big argument to say, what, why do you want to have them remove the price in gallons? Because that's your guarantee that the consumer is not getting ripped off. If yeah. they can see that the price in gallons has not changed, then they know they're not getting ripped off. As soon as that disappears, then like people weren't most people didn't know what a litre was, and of course four and a half litres to a gallon, um, you know people were a bit hazy on the conversion conversions. Yeah, of they were. <clears throat> but hey, anywho, um, you pay that on imports from the US. Yes, you do, but what I'm talking about is stuff that's sold in America and then starts being sold here. Not yeah, well, stuff that's imported. Yeah, when you, you get a product that a company is marketing. The biggest one I can think of is iTunes. A mm. single costs 99 cents in America. Costs 99 pence here. 
Yes. They did that for a long time. Yeah. Um, Alan Reynolds of Buckland Junction says, Thank God beer still comes in a pint. No, but you can... Yeah, I bet you they want to change that to 500 millilitres, but charge you the same. Richard Grutus says, Cost me £5 to pump up tyres last week. That's inflation for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the honorary dad joke oh of the evening. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right, guys... Uh, so uh, where are we up? So we're coming up on the end of the Monday Club. What have we been talking about today? Well, in the big news, we have got an all new range of O sixteen point five. They're calling it NG seven, but we all know it's O sixteen point five from Backman. They announced this at the Statfold Barn Narrow Gauge Show, where <coughs> they're introducing initially at least a range of the Seamcraft Narrow Gauge buildings that have already been made available in for the 009 range will be being upscaled to 016.5, which includes the narrow gauge engine shed, the narrow gauge coal shed, and the narrow gauge water tank, which I have to say it's one of my favourite from the 009 range, that and the tunnel map. They're doing the Quarry Hunslet, all the different versions, you can get it with or without a cab, and they're doing initially at least three different wagons. The traditional slate wagon uh, for the dressed slate, the slab wagon that would have carried huge blocks of slate around the quarry, and also the coal tub wagons that would have been used to carry the coal from the Norwich um, port up to the quarry. Um, and this uh, complements the Daypole range and the Pico range. So it's really interesting. I think that this will do for 016.5 what um, uh, Backman introducing the 009 range did for 009 yes. and really make it accessible. Oh, I couldn't um, agree more. And well. certainly for you know, the older modelers such as myself, my eyesight is not what it was, so modelling in, in 7 millimetres to the foot is a lot easier on the eye than modelling in 4 millimetres oh, to the foot. The eye. Mm. Now, uh, we have also had the uh, Rapido uh, 1907 clearinghouse wagons have been released. I've got two different ones, so this is going to be a review. Are you sure a different one? Because I, I keep getting flashbacks to Bleach and Your Star. Yeah, Lund. There Lund. we go. Um, it's a full range, some really colourful private owner liveries. Uh, Rapido sent over what a couple for us. It's a company. Because uh, it sounds an awful lot like some really, really uh, chewy, uh, I was gonna say sweets. I was going to say a northern insult, like, you lunt, you. That as well, but, but you, can, can I, you imagine? Could I have a packet of lunt? <laughs> yeah, but more importantly, the Monday Club wagon is completely sold out. So... A huge thank you to everybody who supported uh, Monday Club Wagon Project 3. It's been really great um, to have your support. We are already looking at Monday Club Wagon Project 4. Um, somebody did ask actually how we picked manufacturers. I mentioned in the story about how the Acura scale one happened. But then with uh, the PAL brick, um, I started looking around. I wanted to do something very different and the PAL brick was being launched at the right time in model form by KR Models. And um, I just I just negotiated a deal with them. Uh, the third wagon, I actually um, I got talking to Rapido at one of the shows. I think it may even have been Warley. And they, uh, on spec actually, uh, produced us the graphics for the William Loudonson's wagon. And they just looked so good. And we, we just like, you know, they basically, they made us an offer that was really good. And we thought the livery that they designed for us was incredible. Um, so that's why we went with that. And I like the idea of using different manufacturers. We're all about supporting and promoting the hobby here. Um, that is the big thing that we do on the Monday Club. We are for the hobby. Um, and um, I like the idea of, of sort of doing a round robin of all the manufacturers we can. So at the moment, we're looking at Daypole. And this also gives us an opportunity to be able to consider an N-Gage Monday Club wagon for the first time. We will have to do it as a Kickstarter because it is a huge commitment. And we cannot do it unless you guys commit to buying the wagons in N-Gage, um, because otherwise I end, up, it, it, I, I end up hugely out of pocket. I can't afford it. We're also considering doing an O-Gage wagon um, as well. Uh, the only wagon, uh, before anybody asks, that we can't do is TT120. Now, we could go to Pico and commission one 
but the minimum order run is quite large. Again, we could do it as a Kickstarter, but we want to initially try our toe with Engage. Um, but in the future, we'll definitely look into that. And if they're successful, then we could consider releasing um, like Engage or TT120 or even O Gage versions of previous um, things like the Monday Club Project 3 one, the William Loudon Sons that's just come out. We could look into whether we'd be able to do that as an O gauge or an N gauge or even a TT120 commission. So watch this space. Simon Train's Mother Railway Showcase suggests some need to graffiti is the answer day pole on a day pole wagon. Dominic Zed, our kickline correspondent, it is great to see you. I hope you are well. Lovely to see you. It's been a while. And name a game at YT says night all. See you next week. Take care. Thanks, Jenny and Zoe. For another good Monday club night, get well soon, Zoe. Railway Rob says, great show as always, night. Richard Bruton says, see you next Monday. Um, so, um, good night, everyone, says Joshua W56. 3B Rail says, many thanks, Jenny and Zoe. Great stream. Hope you feel better soon, Zoe. And the a final question from London Transport 57XX Duck. Hi, Jenny. What do you think is the best N gauge model train? Oh. Um, now that's a tricky one. Um, I really like the Gronk. Um, the Gronk is always good. Pass me one of the Gronks. So this is an N-Gage Gronk. Uh, this was actually very kindly bought for Zoe by Zantec. So thank you so it's, much for your generosity. It's really lovely, thank you. But the Graham Farish Gronk is perfectly formed. I do love it. They also do a class 04 diesel shunter which we don't have one of but I, I think that that's another amazing model but i'm also quite taken by the efe um so i'm going to show you this um was this tim krinsky that it sent was, you yeah. that tim krinsky sent in uh this is one of the engage logos it's a class 20 in london transport livery it's got such an interesting eye-catching look to it oh i do love a class 20 and yes, London Transport 57XX duck number L99. It, um, is it an N-gauge London Transport 57XX? I know Daypole do do I have one. To say, the Class 20 is growing on me because mm. it's it's like a gronk with a big nose. <laughs> it's like, gronk! Gronk! <laughs> no, instead of being a gronk, it's a conk. <laughs> I like that. For those of you who don't know, conk is a slang for a nose. <laughs> Growl the Blackwood Engage layout it says class 59 by Revol Revolution, definitely the best in N. Um, so, look, good night, everybody. We're going to ring this to a close. You can hear the monkey of uh, cupboardness is not feeling so great. Don't forget to check out Wednesday's video. will be an exclusive first listen to the class 4234 vet sound profile, a proper uh, video all about that. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to change the camera angle as well so I can just about see that in the background uh, oh, yeah. oh. so um, I'm gonna move the class 29 out of the way so I can show you the class 401 this is fitted with the HM7000 decoder and I've got the beta test group finalized class 423 so I think this is due for release this week um, but we've got a full listen to it and it's a great sound profile absolutely going to be really really useful certainly the first time an emu profile has been made available on a budget sound decoder i think it's going to go well into not just the class 423 but as you can see here the class 401 402 403 410 411 416 and 419 as well so um uh friday's video is going to be our trip to italy including a little bit of train action so well worth seeing but the weather was amazing absolutely but until next time this is me jenny coat saying please like share subscribe and um as well uh, the monday club wagon totally sold out um you can try calling up the rails shop because they do have segregated stock it'll only be one or two ring them up tell them jenny sent you uh, and you might get lucky if you want to grab the very last monday club wagons unless indeed somebody beat you to it but until next time you take great care of yourself happy modeling bye for now
The Monday Club is proudly sponsored by TMC, The Model Centre. Check them out at themodelcentre.com. The website features extensive stocks of new models as well as selective pre-owned items where you can track down that bargain you've always wanted. Pre-order with confidence all of the forthcoming models from all the manufacturers. TMC also offer a renumbering and renaming service so you can get the exact identity of locomotive that you want. Why not also check out their value weathering or go for something incredibly special with their bespoke service where you can choose from a more extensive weathered look right through to custom graffiti either off the peg or to a design of your choice. Check out TMC today at themodelcentre.com and start your model journey. That's the 2108 service to Bolton Trinity Road. If you go up to the loft today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go up to the loft today, you'll never believe your eyes. For every train there ever was, has gathered there together because the day the day that Jenny does come on, gay club. Good night. Oh no, it's a tumble of clowns. I thought I recognised that odious flapping of large oversized uh, shoes and... Um, you leave my choice of footwear alone, you. And the squidge of custard sloshing around oversized pants. I'll leave your decisions to on your fashions to you, shall I? I'm going to head down now. I'll see you down there. I wish I could stay, but I can't. Bye bye, guys. Smell you later. Ow, ow, ow. If anybody's interesting, we've got. There is a class. If anybody's interesting. If anybody's interested, there is a class 20 going around, um, and we've also got the class 423 fired up. At the moment, you're hearing the station announcements of one of the auxiliary functions on the class. Four two three four vet. Also, don't forget to check out the Javanese YouTuber at uh, Ahmad uh, Arif twenty nine. Some amazing videos for some inspiration on narrow gauge uh, Javanese sugarcane railway videos. Some incredible footage and certainly should get you all fired up inspiration wise to do narrow gauge. Is it going to take over the hobby? I don't think so. I think Double O still has an amazing foothold. Foothold even, not the hole. You fall in the hole. But an amazing foothold, but certainly narrow gauge is becoming a bigger and bigger segment of the market.
it's a tumble of clowns. They get everywhere. Big thank you, Flymo Chairman One, for posting the links. Of course, don't forget, everybody, tickle that like button if you haven't already done so. Do subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell. Really important to make sure that you are up to date on the videos that you chose to follow. And also, do please consider sharing this stream to the uh, uh, social media platforms of your choice. Let other people know about what we're up to here. Good night, J. Paul Anderson. Good night, Nigel Cole. Good night, Fly Chairman, Chairman One. Good night, Valleys 56XX. And I need to go and just make sure that the Monkey of Madness is doing okay. She's come over really quite ill. I think it's something that she's picked up probably on the aeroplane or um, in the airport. So just got to go and make sure that she's all right. But um, do take care, everybody. We'll be back next week. We've got an exclusive first listen to the Hornby Class 423 sound profile uh, on Wednesday with a test fit into a Hornby Class 401. And on Friday, we've got our full Italian road trip. So do tune in for that. But until next time, you guys take great care of yourself. Happy modeling. Bye for now. Yes, Valley's 56XX, that is 4995, I think it is. Um, it is the preserved G2A that's in the National Railway Museum. I spotted it in a drawer and thought, I haven't run that in ages. So I uh, got that out and stinging the rails at speed. Okay, take care. Happy modeling. Sleep tight. Bye for now.